An army of animals asked a man what weapons he had if he didn't have claws and fangs. The man replied that he had many things to show his strength. Flesh, blood, bones, and sweat are the powers that can be used as weapons to swallow and kill. In this world, there are many creatures created, one of which is spirit. Spirits are known as animals that have extraordinary abilities and powers. Some of them are also endowed with human form by the gods. The spirits that have a human-like or humanoid form are called prophets. Among the spirits, there was also an incarnation that was infatuated with evil called evil spirit. In a forest overgrown with large trees, there were several groups of people who were hunting someone. They looked like a gang of robbers looting a treasure. The group was satisfied with killing their opponents and taking their valuables. Before sunrise, the group of looters decided to leave the forest. They felt the atmosphere of the forest that night was very tense. One of the groups said that there were rumors about wild animals in the forest. They then decided to get out of there immediately, but suddenly their steps stopped because in front of them were a lot of dead wolves. The looters wondered if the wolf pack was fighting each other for territory. One of them said that the wolves seemed to be hunted unilaterally and without any resistance. Suddenly, one of the looters shouted for someone named Martin. The man told Martin that he saw a very large spirit. Martin said, maybe the wolf was the leader of the wolf army they saw first. Near the wolf king, a dead man was seen. Martin suspected that the man had killed the wolf pack, but his members said that it was impossible. Martin then asked his troops to take the valuables of the man they thought was dead, but suddenly, a red lizard bit Martin's leg. A man with a bald head asked Martin to calm down. The man said that he would cut the lizard's body in half. Unexpectedly, the man they thought was dead punched the bald-headed man in the face. The man's eyes looked very upset and angry. The man's entire body was covered in cuts and blood. The man said not to disturb his pets. He threatened to kill the bandits if they dared to hurt the red lizard. Martin yelled at the rest of his men to attack the man who had killed their member, Hans. But the man said that Hans was not dead. Martin was so upset, he shouted for all his troops to surround the man. The man said that they were all very stupid for daring to fight him. He asked them to retreat if they wanted to survive. With a sharp gaze, the man told the looters that he would cut all of their bodies like wolves. Of course, the bandits didn't listen to what the man said. They all ran towards the man while brandishing their weapons. One of the bandits screamed in pain as his hand was slashed by the man with the red lizard. Martin was getting furious. He then ordered all the shooters to shoot at the man. But suddenly, the man grabbed the red lizard and hugged it. The man drooped limply and made the looting troops wonder if the man was dead. But from the man's body came a very creepy aura. From his body came out a lot of wolf-shaped monster figures. The bandits knew that the man was an evil spirit. Suddenly, the man regained consciousness, and without realizing it, someone was watching him on the tree. Not long after, the man called Evil Spirit was already tied up in chains with the wolf king he killed. He was carried away by the plundering herd in a carriage. A big old man was amazed that the evil spirit was able to kill the wolf king. The man asked the group of people in front of him to burn the wolf king's corpse immediately. The big man then approached the evil spirit and asked for his identity. The evil spirit said that his name was Ananta. The old man asked what Ananta's purpose was in exterminating all the wolf packs. Ananta looked at the man and said that he was hungry. The old man was surprised by Ananta's words. Meanwhile, his subordinate said that the old man did not need to listen to what Ananta said. The subordinate told him that they all saw Ananta turn into a very scary monster. The subordinate also confirmed that in recent times, there had been a lot of rumors about murders in the mountainous area. The subordinate said that the rumors were related to stories of evil spirits eating the corpses of intruders in their area. But the old man called the Lord replied that Ananta looked clearly human. The subordinate asked his master to look at the scars that had formed on the body of the wolf king Ananta had killed. The subordinate said that Ananta was an evil spirit who was using his illusion. Ananta suddenly chuckled and made the subordinate feel very upset. Ananta then said how could they all feel fine in the presence of an evil spirit who had killed another spirit. With a mocking face, Ananta said whether they all felt safe just tying themselves using a mine. Ananta said that they all knew nothing. Suddenly, a crow flew over them and was immediately devoured by the wolf king that they had assumed dead.
The blood of the crow splattered and hit the face of one of the old men. They were all shocked at the gruesome sight. Ananta said that the wolf king had the body of a special monster. Ananta mentioned that the wolf had once been a spirit being, but had fallen into the hands of an evil spirit. Not long after Ananta spoke, a huge evil spirit appeared. The evil spirit brought a pack of wolves to attack the humans. The looters screamed hysterically. The evil spirit's wolf army attacked their territory and made them all panic in fear. Huge flames burned the wolf army. The fire came from a tall figure who was none other than Ananta. Ananta stepped up while saying that he was very thirsty and hungry. He said that he would use his blood, sweat, flesh and bones to defeat evil spirit's army. Ananta, who had transformed into a large tall figure, stepped toward the evil spirit leader. Ananta said that he would tear the evil spirit king to pieces until the king wished for his own death. The evil spirit's wolf army attacked Ananta's large figure, but Ananta easily defeated the wolf pack. The fierce battle between Ananta and the evil spirit was still ongoing. The two creatures gave no quarter at all. Ananta had a firm grip on the hand of the evil spirit king. Ananta then drove his fist into the evil spirit's face. The evil spirit fell to the ground and died. Not long after, Ananta transformed back into a human figure. Ananta stepped closer to the evil spirit. He then lifted the body of a white-haired woman. Ananta muttered that the woman was apparently unconscious because her eyes even looked like they were being controlled by something. Not long after, a black creature came towards Ananta. Ananta shouted at the creature that it must be his figure that had eaten the corpses in the area. The large black creature was none other than a demon god. The demon god took off his bird mask and said that he did not expect all his dolls to be defeated by Ananta. The demon god also said that he had been watching Ananta since he came to the land. Ananta asked the demon god to stop babbling. He asked the man to fight him and would split the demon god's body in two. The demon god said that the power he had was extraordinary because he could control the souls of the dead as his army. The demon god said that Ananta would be killed and used as his army. The demon god also said that he could turn Ananta into a phantom. Ananta looked around him. He saw that the people who had died were alive again. The demon god said that his undead barricade would kill Ananta. Not long after, the mass of undead thrust their weapons into Ananta's body. But Ananta did not react in any way. Meanwhile, the demon god only chuckled while saying whether Ananta no longer had energy. The demon god stepped closer to Ananta's body, while asking Ananta to say his last message before dying. But suddenly Ananta's eyes turned bright red. His figure turned into a giant monster that surprised the demon god. The monster Ananta attacked the demon god and made him scream in pain. Meanwhile, the white-haired woman who had been unconscious since the beginning finally woke up. The woman was shocked to see the scene in front of her. Ananta's figure realized that. Ananta then stepped his foot towards the woman. The woman was now terrified to see Ananta's very creepy form. Ananta then told the woman that she was now free from the demon god's control. The woman held her head, saying that she had previously gone in the direction of the glowing wings. Ananta was surprised to hear the woman's words. The man seemed to recognize the figure in question. Ananta asked if the woman was also a victim of the white wings. The woman looked down not understanding what Ananta was saying. The woman with blue eyes asked who Ananta was. Ananta introduced himself as a descendant of the Black Dragon, who survived and managed to survive. Ananta said that he would devour every demon god in the world. The woman was surprised to hear Ananta's words. Ananta also said that he would kill Wing Incarnation. Ananta finally managed to eradicate all of the demon god's forces. In front of the white-haired girl, he confidently said that he would kill all the demon gods as well as the incarnation wing. Ananta also mentioned in front of the woman that he was a survivor of the black dragon. The woman did not understand what Ananta was saying. Ananta told the white-haired woman that the white wings she saw were the embodiment of the black dragon. The woman was immediately shocked by Ananta's words. She immediately got up from her seat and ran because she knew something bad was happening. She approached the corpse of the black dragon while crying. Suddenly behind her appeared a white-winged figure smiling at her. The woman was so shocked that she fainted. Not long after, the woman woke up. 
a pink-haired woman greeted her. The pink-haired woman said that the white-haired woman looked very painful while sleeping. The pink-haired woman asked if the woman with blue eyeballs had a nightmare. Suddenly Ananta came and asked his red lizard to do something. Suddenly a huge flame came out of the lizard's mouth. It turned out that the lizard named Ruby was burning all the objects that had the effect of the demon god. The pink-haired woman smiled happily and thanked Ananta. Ananta suddenly smacked the woman on the head as he asked her to stop her nonsense. Ananta said that he would not have tried so hard if not for the useless information from the pink-haired girl. Ananta said that the agreement between the two of them was now over. Ananta demanded payment from the pink-haired woman. The pink-haired woman asked the white-haired woman what the name of her incarnation was. The blue-haired girl replied that her name was Nadia. The red-haired woman laughed easily as she said that she was surprised that there was a space goat other than Ananta. Nadia did not understand what the girl was saying. Meanwhile, Ananta asked the pink-haired girl to stop babbling. Suddenly, the pink-haired girl took out a round, gold-colored object. She then seemed to press something from it and made them all move. Nadia screamed because she was so surprised. Suddenly, they were all in a strange place. Nadia asked where they were now. Suddenly, the pink-haired woman apologized for introducing herself too late. Smiling, she introduced herself as a member of the largest intelligence on the Rabbit Feet continent. The woman was named Hayang Bal, who came from the Cutie Information Division. Hayang Bal also introduced Ananta as her co-worker. Hayang Bal then introduced to Nadia that they were currently in Cafe's city. It was the largest city in the south. In front of the four of them, there was a huge towering tree called the White Lotus Tree. Hayang Bal told them that the tree was a type of god tree. But suddenly Nadia shouted, saying that she was very grateful to Ananta for saving her life. But Nadia said that she did not want to hear the story only from Hayang Bal's side. Nadia asked Hayang Bal to answer her questions before she continued her story. Nadia asked what was the purpose of Hayang Bal and Ananta bringing her to the strange city. But Ananta suddenly interrupted Nadia. He asked Nadia not to talk too much and to just follow him. Ananta said that he would tell Nadia what the reason was for taking her to the city of cafes. While walking, Nadia asked Ananta what kind of wing incarnation Ananta wanted to kill. Ananta said that this figure always claimed to be God. But according to Ananta, wing incarnation is nothing more than a beast who is very disgusting. Hayang Bal then explained that the incarnation of wing could give power to others. But Hayang Bal said that the power of the figure was referred to as imperfect power. Nadia still did not understand Hayang Bal's explanation. Suddenly, Ananta said that they had all arrived at their destination. There, Nadia saw many people being held captive. A man welcomes her, saying that she is now in the slave market of Cafe's city. Hayang Bal explained that the slavers captured immigrants, travelers, and even mystical animals. Nadia didn't understand why she was brought to that place. She asked what this had to do with the incarnation of Wing. Ananta then kicked Nadia's body into a room. Nadia was surprised to see so many people trapped in the room. Ananta told her that they were all offerings used to target the incarnation of Wings. And the human sacrifice was at the top of the God Tree. In that tree, many humans have been sacrificed. Ananta mentions that Nadia will be part of the people who will be sacrificed to hunt down the incarnation of wings. Nadia was finally arrested and put into a cell along with the people who would be used as bait for the incarnation of wing. Ananta walked away from Nadia, telling Hayang Bal to continue with the rest. Nadia yelled at Ananta whether all the people who were detained with her were Ananta's doing. Ananta coldly asks back, If it is true, what will Nadia do? Nadia yelled from inside the cell to stop playing them all. Ananta could not use the weak to achieve her own goals. Nadia also asked Ananta if the man had no guilt at all, but Ananta suddenly said that she cannot avenge herself if she does not get her hands dirty. Nadia was surprised to hear Ananta's words. Nadia said that she could not accept Ananta's actions at all. Young Bal understood why Nadia felt unfair. Without guilt, Hayang Bal said that she herself could not imagine what the fate of the people who would be used as sacrifices for the wing of incarnation. Nadia was furious and called Ananta and Hayang Bal despicable people. Nadia was angry with Hayang Bal as she said that the two of them should not take advantage of others at will. Hayang Bal smiled and said that Nadia was exactly as Ananta had said. 
Hayang Bal said that until now, Nadia was still controlled by the power of the demon god, and that Nadia had killed many people. Hayang Bal also mentioned that Nadia must not care how many lives she had killed. Hayang Bal also said that even though Nadia had no intention of killing at all, Nadia could not eliminate the fact that she had killed many people. Nadia trembled violently at Hayang Bal's words. Meanwhile, Hayang Bal smiled because she managed to provoke Nadia. Hayang Bal also said that Nadia should not take her anger out on Ananta and her. Nadia walked away, saying that their real enemy was the evil incarnation of wings. In a room under the god tree, Hayang Bal met Ananta. There Ananta looked dreamy as if he was thinking about something. The pink-haired woman said that the sacrifice of the slaves had nothing to do with Ananta. The man then asked Hayang Bal about Nadia's condition. Hayang Bal explained that Nadia was willing to cooperate. Hayang Bal also mentioned that the slave army was heading to the White Lotus Temple with the wing guards. It was known that the sacrificial offering of slaves was the first step to trapping the incarnation of wing. Inside the god tree, there was a helper in the Lotus Temple. The helper would not be able to be attacked because there was already a magic protector guarding him. All the slaves would participate in a race. Those who could obtain a Lotus Tree branch would be the ones who managed to survive until the end. Those who won could then meet the incarnation of wings. Hayang Bal muttered, If only Ananta had made up his mind from the beginning, it would have been easier for them side to attract the enemy's attention and carry out a massive massacre. Hayang Bal stared intently at Ananta's face. The woman knew that there were certain lines that should not be crossed between the human and animal realms. Ananta realized that Hayang Bal had been watching him. Ananta got up from his seat. He said that she wanted to go hunting because he had not eaten for a long time. Ananta asked Hayang Bal to sit on the edge of the field and watch him hunt. Hayang Bal asked Ananta not to do anything that would attract the attention of many people. Hayang Bal also warned Ananta that bad things might happen if Ananta acted recklessly. Anata only replied that he would remember the message. Ruby, meanwhile, yawned at Hayang Bal's words. Not long after, Ananta was already inside a very grand colloquium. There were several people trying to defeat a giant mystical tiger. Ananta asked them all to step aside. Anata, with his axe, was now in front of the tiger. Without taking long, Ananta killed the tiger with ease. Everyone in the Colosseum was shocked. They wondered how a mere mortal could eradicate a mythical animal. Meanwhile, Hayang Bal thought that Ananta was a big problem. All the spectators at the colloquium screamed hysterically and showed faces of disbelief. Ananta shouted at the god tree, saying that he would cut and eat the incarnation of wings in the near future. Meanwhile, the slaves, including Nadia, were already walking towards the gate of the White Lotus Temple. Not long after, a white-haired person appeared to welcome all the slaves. Nadia guessed that it was the incarnation of wings. The person greeted all the slaves while saying that welcomed them all to the god's temple. The incarnation of wing is known to create avatars of the wings to ask for sacrifices, and anyone who can fulfill his request will get a chance to participate in the Cepheus arena. The participants who could prove their strength and win against the spirit beasts would receive extraordinary powers from the incarnation of wings. Those who grant that power are called the guardians of the wings. Before all the slaves went to the god's temple, Hayang Bal answered all the questions from Nadia about her curiosity towards the incarnations of the wings. Nadia asked why all the slaves with her were used as bait. Hayang Bal replied that it was a strategy to break through the enemy defenses and infiltrate the temple. Nadia also asked why Ananta wanted to kill the avatar of the wings so badly. She also wondered if her plan had anything to do with Ananta's power. Hayang Bal said it was difficult to give that answer, but Hayang Bal said there was something called revenge incarnate. Hayang Bal said the revenge was something that other beings could not even imagine. Meanwhile, inside the god's temple, the incarnate of the wing saw the terrified slaves. He asked the slaves not to be afraid and raised their heads. The white-haired man introduced himself as the saint who received the offering. The man's name was Balzac Ilgini. Balzac said that he was the owner of the white lotus tree and an avatar of the wings. Balzac also boasted that he had extraordinary flapping wings that could be heard in the dark world. 
Balzac said that they were all people who accepted the offer of mercy as a sacrifice. Balzac asked all the slaves to prepare themselves for eternal solitude. With a cruel gaze, Balzac said that their bodies would all be safe in the wings of salvation. Suddenly someone cried out to Balzac for mercy. The black-haired woman asked for mercy from Balzac to save her innocent sister. The woman begged Balzac to spare her sister. Balzac approached the woman and called her a beautiful human being. His hand grabbed her hair and instantly decapitated her. Blood splattered in front of her sister's eyes, which terrified her. Everyone became very frightened. Balzac sat on his throne saying that her sister was purified and free from fear or pity. With a sinless face, Balzac said that her brother would soon be sent to Nirvana. Suddenly, Nadia, who was still controlled by the demon god, went berserk. She called Balzac not a savior, but only a crazy killer. Balzac smiled and said why there were always avatars among the offerings. Nadia then transformed into a monster that made everyone scream in fear. Nadia turned to the slaves and said that she would protect them all. Balzac attacked Nadia, telling her not to act arrogantly in front of him. Balzac also mentioned that Nadia was just a nameless avatar whose origins were unclear. Balzac also said that Nadia was very arrogant for daring to interfere with his business. Nadia told Balzac that she also had a name to be proud of. The girl introduced herself as Nadia, the avatar of nature. From Nadia's body came a string of green and brown roots. Balzac laughed as he called Nadia a brave woman. On the other hand, at the Colosseum, all the spectators, including Ananta, were surprised to hear a commotion in the white lotus tree. Ananta wondered what was going on in the Temple of God. Meanwhile, Nadia was surprised why her succulous power was successfully dispelled with one attack. Nadia knew that this power was the highest level of her ability. Nadia felt that now the level of the incarnations of Wing was different from before. Suddenly, Balzac raised a monster that made Nadia surprised. Now Nadia's stomach has an object piercing her stomach. Balzac said that Nadia must be careful when serving Yo's loyal followers. Behind Balzac appeared a very large monster. The monster was gray and had claws and a body filled with sharp thorns. Currently at the Colosseum, Ananta is still dealing with the mystical tiger. Ananta swung his axe, saying that the tiger must not hate him. He also asked the tiger to face death with open arms. Finally, the mythical animal was dead, and the host announced that the winner of the arena was Ananta. Meanwhile, there were two men who felt unhappy with Ananta's victory. One of the men asked his colleague named Duke Bernhard what he would do to Ananta. Because according to the man, the winner should be Duke Bernhard. The host said that Ananta would get a branch from the white lotus tree given by the wing guardian. Duke Bernhard told his partner that the plan would go ahead. And no matter what, Bernhard had to get the branch of the white lotus tree. Ananta took the gift and immediately opened the box containing the branch of the white lotus tree. The branch was now in his hands. Meanwhile, inside the temple of gods, Nadia sat on the floor holding her stomach. As a result of the puncture from Balzac's large, sharp thorn, her stomach was wounded and bleeding. Balzac said to Nadia that she would proudly protect the slaves. Balzac said that now the slaves looked very scared. Balzac also said that Nadia should immediately save the slaves from the fear they felt. Balzac called it Yeo's compassion. Nadia told Balzac that she did not want to repeat her words twice. Nadia once again said that the incarnate of the wing was not a savior and was only a demon who spread fear. Balzac began to feel annoyed. He then said that he would now show mercy in the form of despair. Suddenly, everyone in Nadia's root sanctuary was attacked by giant sharp thorns that pierced their chests. Nadia was shocked to see that. The incarnate of the wing smiled with satisfaction and said that they should all be amazed by the beam of the wings of salvation. Balzac mentioned that his place was a hell where life and death never existed. Balzac mentioned that humans only have a very short life. Balzac also mentioned that only he could give meaningful life to humans. Balzac then resurrected the dead with his power and made their faces all like monsters. Balzac said that those who died and were resurrected by him would become new humans who would protect the white lotus tree. Balzac called it a gift from the wings. Nadia was furious and asked who Balzac really was. Nadia also asked how many innocent human lives he had killed. 
Balzac did not answer Nadia's question. The snag incarnate of the wing unleashed his power and bound Nadia with a giant root. Balzac answered Nadia's question that he had never counted how many humans he had killed. According to Balzac, they all have no value. Balzac asked if Nadia had a last message before her death. Nadia said that Balzac should die and boil in hell. But suddenly someone came infiltrating and a force attacked Balzac from the direction of the door of the Temple of God. That person is none other than Ananta the Black Dragon. Ananta's presence with his axe took Balzac by surprise. Ananta plunged a branch from the lotus tree into Balzac's eye. Meanwhile, Ananta greeted Nadia and did not expect the white-haired woman to survive. Balzac looks at Ananta while asking if Ananta won the hunt at the colloquium. Balzac said that it was very unlikely for Ananta. Ananta asks Nadia where the incarnate of the wing is and why Nadia is dealing with Balzac. Nadia was confused by Ananta's question because all she knew was that Balzac was the incarnate of the wing. Balzac was upset that Ananta was able to trespass into the White Lotus. Balzac was also furious because Ananta had insulted Sang Yo, who was the incarnate of the wing. Ananta told everyone inside the White Lotus that Balzac was not the incarnate of the wing. Meanwhile, on the sidewalk leading to the White Lotus, Duke Bernhard was seen beating up the guards. Bernhard was surprised that he had never heard the name of the person who won in the arena. But when he was about to enter the door of the White Lotus, Bernhard was surprised to see a lot of dead people in front of the door. Bernhard wondered if the winner of the arena, Ananta, had come to the White Lotus and was after the incarnate of the wing. Inside the White Lotus, Nadia was still wondering why Ananta had mentioned Balzac instead of the incarnate of the wing. Ananta was annoyed with Nadia and said she was just using her eyes as a display. Ananta explained to Nadia that the incarnate of the wing had three pairs of white wings as its symbol. Ananta yelled at Balzac. The man should be able to imitate well. Ananta also called Balzac a useless piece of trash. Balzac was annoyed by Ananta's remarks and asked his troops to attack. Ananta activated his powers. His hands turned huge and had sharp claws. Ananta transformed into a monster and attacked Balzac's monster. The fierce battle between Balzac and Ananta's monsters continued. Blood splatters scattered in various corners of the White Lotus signaled the fierceness of the fight. Balzac's monster was defeated by Ananta. Balzac changed to his original form. Balzac's head is no longer human, but rather the head of a bird. He said that Ananta was great enough to withstand the power of a god. Balzac said that he would crush Ananta to dust. Ananta grabbed Balzac's hand and gripped it tightly. Balzac and Ananta fought each other with incredible strength. Balzac wondered how Ananta could last so long with all his attacks. Ananta exerted all his strength to defeat the fake incarnate of the wing. Now Ananta's attack managed to hit Balzac in the chest and made him cry out in pain. Balzac fell to the floor cursing Ananta with curse words. He called Ananta a lowly creature. Ananta then showed his ultimate power and said that he would show the power of a god. A white-clothed person with a sharp gaze descended from the sky and went towards the White Lotus. Meanwhile, at the White Lotus, Balzac showed Ananta the power of his monster called Glorious Wings. But Ananta suddenly immediately attacked Balzac's stomach and made him scream in pain. Balzac felt very upset. He then released all his strength. Now from his body, more sharp thorns appeared than before. Balzac said that he would turn Ananta into minced meat. With his ultimate power, Balzac attacked Ananta and made the White Lotus Room shake violently. But it turned out that Ananta managed to avoid Balzac's attack and instead made a counterattack on Balzac. Balzac was furious. His eyes glared at Ananta. Balzac called Ananta a crazy bastard. Balzac is surprised that Ananta's body is now much stronger than before. Similarly, Nadia is confused now that Ananta's physique is getting bigger and looks very strong. Balzac feels that Ananta's speed is beyond human understanding. Balzac wondered if Ananta's ability had regenerated and changed his body. Balzac knew that he could not avoid Ananta's power at all. Ananta and Balzac fought again. A large mass of roots emerged from the floor. Ananta jumped to avoid the attack. Ananta knew that Balzac would always regenerate and heal from his wounds no matter how many times he attacked him. This was because Balzac had a branch of the white lotus tree. Ananta also felt that if he continued to fight with Balzac, 
then it would not benefit him at all. Ananta suddenly thought of an idea. He then flew to the rooftops and destroyed the ceiling. Balzac immediately caught Ananta with the power of his roots. Balzac asked if Ananta thought that the ruins of the rooftops could make him die. Balzac also asked if Ananta was planning to make a stupid plan. Ananta asked Balzac how many he had taken away. Balzac mentioned that he was so bored with life that he never counted the human lives he had killed. According to Balzac, they were all meaningless. Suddenly, from the rooftops that Ananta had torn down, a multitude of undead appeared. The souls brought to life by Ananta fell from the ceiling and took Balzac by surprise. The army of souls attacked Balzac from all sides. Balzac screamed and asked them all to stay away from his body. Meanwhile, Nadia was lost for words and didn't expect Anata to have that kind of ability. The army of souls attacked Balzac mercilessly. Their numbers grew and continued to overwhelm Balzac's body. But suddenly, a dazzling light appeared. A man named Beharin greeted the arrival of the original incarnate of the wing. The incarnate of the wing said that Beharin's welcome seemed very excessive. Before the arrival of the incarnate of the wing, Hyang Bal witnessed a rift in the sky above the white lotus tree. Hyang Bal knew for sure that it was the incarnate of the wing. Hyang Bal also said that if Ananta were to visit the temple now, he would surely meet the enemy. Over the phone, Hyang Bal reported that a servant called the Avatar of the Wing was already present in Cafe City. Meanwhile, inside the white lotus, the incarnate of the wing came to Balzac who had been badly injured. Balzac was surprised how the incarnate of the wing could be in front of him now. The incarnate of the wing asked if Balzac had forgotten him. Balzac replied, how could he forget the one who had broken his wings as a loyal servant? The incarnate of the wing said the reason he took Balzac's wings was because Balzac was considered to have fallen into false glory. The incarnate of the wing told Balzac that wings are something that should be given to someone who will soar. Balzac yelled at the incarnate of the wing and said that he had sacrificed a lot to create his monster body. Balzac also mentioned that he had eaten many humans as a form of respect for the incarnate of the wing. Balzac said that he did it all to get his wings back. The incarnate of the wing called Balzac foolish and cunning. The incarnate of the wing stepped closer to Balzac while holding Balzac's chest. Balzac cried out in pain and finally collapsed into dust. Meanwhile, Ananta watched the events unfold in front of his from his hiding place. Ananta suddenly remembered his past. Someone had once met him and told him that he had a dream. The dream was to find a world horizon that could connect the world of humans with the world of gods. The white-haired man told little Ananta that he would never give up until he could achieve his dream. He even said that he didn't care if everyone would antagonize him for his dream. Little Ananta felt very impressed with the man, but suddenly in his memories, he also saw his loved ones die and his hometown burned down. Beharin told the incarnate of the wing that the name White Lotus was a beautiful name, but no longer relevant to its purpose. The incarnate of the wing said that the branches of the White Lotus tree looked very bad because they could not be compared to the world tree. Incarnate of the wing stepped away while saying that there was someone who had forgotten the interesting relationship between them. Suddenly from behind, Ananta appeared with his anger. He was about to attack the incarnate of the wing. Baharin quickly jumped up to protect his master. The incarnate of the wing smiled. Finally, the person he had been waiting for had come to see him. Ananta's anger was uncontrollable, but Baharin quickly attacked Ananta. Baharin asked Ananta to introduce his name, but Ananta continued to bully and did not want to answer Baharin's questions. The bodyguard of the incarnate of the wing said that it was like he was wasting time. Ananta shouted loudly using his monster form. On the other hand, the incarnate of the wing went to meet Duke Bernhardt, who was fighting Balzac's army. Bernhardt was surprised by the arrival of the incarnate of the wing. The white-haired man greeted Bernhardt and called the big man an unyielding man. Within Ananta's body, there was such a passionate sense of vengeance that anyone who stood in his way would be torn to shreds. Now, Ananta was filled with a deep sense of vengeance and kept shouting because the incarnate of the wing was in front of him. The white-haired man said Ananta was welcoming him. The incarnate of the wing referred to Ananta's monster figure as the black dragon Azi Dahaka. The meeting between Ananta and the black dragon Azi Dahaka was a pivotal moment. 
At that moment, Ananta was in a place filled with a sea of fire. Ananta referred to that place as hell. He intended to leave there, but actually Ananta himself did not know where he would go after that. Suddenly, in front of him appeared a very large black dragon. The black dragon called Ananta a cursed mortal. Ananta was surprised by the dragon's arrival because he knew the figure of the black dragon. Back to the present, where Ananta in the form of Azai Dahaka was running amok. Baharan wondered why the black dragon was raging like a crazy creature. Baharan called Dahala a desperate figure. The black dragon let out a huge flame from its mouth and sprayed it at Baharan. The incarnate of the wing, who saw Ananta's attack, blocked Ananta's attack using its wings. Meanwhile, the incarnate of the wing was now facing Bernhardt. The white-haired man called Bernhardt a tough guy. The incarnate of the wing also said that Bernhardt did not move at all despite being a huge blaze. Carrying his big gun, Bernhardt stared intently at the incarnate of the wing. The white-haired man called Bernhardt an awesome enemy. Bernhardt muttered, Currently, he did not have much time to wait for his comrades to come to his aid. Bernhardt decided to fight the incarnate of the wing, even if he had to die. But just as he was preparing to swing his giant axe, the incarnate of the wing was suddenly in front of him and slammed into his chest, knocking the big man to the ground. The incarnate of the wing came to Nadia and said that the girl with blue eyes looked different. Nadia remembered that she had indeed met the white-haired man. The incarnate of the wing said that the branches of Nadia's body were shaking violently. Nadia was trembling as she faced the incarnate of the wing. The white-haired man said that Nadia was the chosen one who was chosen as the vessel of the great tree. Nadia did not understand what the incarnate of the wing said about the branches of the body. The white-haired man explained that the branch was a miracle that could exceed human limits and could give superpowers to the one who received it. Currently in the hands of the incarnate of the wing was a tree branch. He said that he had a desire to follow the horizon of the world. Suddenly, a yellow light shone very brightly. Not long after, a girl who rose from the dead appeared. The incarnate of the wing asked the girl who she was. The girl with red eyes introduced herself as Ziz. Nadia, who saw this, was very surprised by the power of the incarnate of the wing. On the other hand, Beharin and Ananta were still fighting each other. The black dragon's anger did not subside. Beharin was almost overwhelmed by the black dragon. The raging soul aura clearly radiated from Azi Dahaka's body. Suddenly, the black dragon flew through the rooftops and took Ziz by surprise. The incarnate of the wing stroked Ziz's head and told her not to be afraid. Ananta unleashed his power in the form of a huge fireball. That power was called Celestial Jade Ablaze. The black dragon immediately sprayed the fireball towards the incarnate of the wing. The white-haired man was annoyed and said Anata had underestimated his power. The incarnate of the wing said there was no proper place for the black dragon to be in the sky. Incarnate of the wing unleashed the power of blue-colored light towards Dahaka. The blue light shone brightly and destroyed the power of the white lotus tree. Meanwhile, outside the god's castle, Hyang Bal was reporting to someone that the white lotus tree had been destroyed by the attack from the power of the incarnate of the wing. Hyang Bal also said that Ananta, their trump card, the incarnation of revenge, had been defeated by the incarnate of the wing. Ruby has a historical relationship with Ananta. When Ananta was a child, he once helped Ruby who was being chased by a pack of desert dogs. Ananta threw his axe to scare the dog pack and asked them all to retreat. To frighten the wild dog army, Ananta made one of them die and screamed as loudly as possible. Soon after, the dogs left Ananta and Ruby's presence. After rescuing the red lizard, Ruby continued to follow Ananta. Ananta mentioned that the animal had no body parts to enjoy. Ananta was annoyed with the lizard and asked Ruby to leave his presence. However, Ruby suddenly let out a flame from his mouth which surprised Ananta. Not long after, a giant rhino appeared and chased Ananta and Ruby, both of whom immediately ran away. Ananta and Ruby jumped off a cliff and saw someone. Once at the bottom of the cliff, Ananta shouted to the giant rhino if the giant animal wanted to continue chasing him. Ananta turned his axe and told the rhino that he was not at all afraid of the giant rhino, Ananta also said that he would show the power of a descendant of the black dragon or black dragon to the rhino.
A man behind Ananta suddenly opened his hood and startled Ananta. The white-haired man stared intently at the giant rhino, and all of a sudden, the giant rhino just left. The man asked Ananta if she was okay. That day was also the first time Ananta met the incarnate of the wing. From that meeting, Ananta's life began to change. Ananta then invited the incarnate of the wing to come with him to the village. Everyone in the village wondered who the man was that Ananta had brought with him. Then a woman came up to Ananta. The woman held Ananta's face in concern. She asked him if he was all right. She also asked if Ananta had gone to the spirit realm alone. The woman asked Ananta a lot of questions. She also asked what the strange creature was above his head. Ananta replied that it had just followed her. The woman turned out to be Ananta's older sister, Ashita. Ananta introduced Ashita to the man next to her. Suddenly, Ashita coughs up blood and makes Ananta very panicked. Ananta asked Ashita to go inside and rest. The white-haired man, whom Ananta called Master, was asked to enjoy the meal that was prepared. The chief asked the master to enjoy the food prepared. The chief also apologized for not being able to welcome him properly, as they did not usually receive guests from outside. The chief, who was called the old man, invited the master to rest comfortably before continuing his journey. The master, whose name was Ryu, thanked him for the warm welcome. Meanwhile, Ruby stared intently at the master, as did he. The old man then said that as long as Ryu was in their village, Ananta would help Ryu. The old man also asked what brought the master to their village in the remote wilderness. The chief said that the terrain in the forest was very rough and not suitable for traveling. Ryu said that he was an explorer researching the culture, geography, and incarnations of various places. The old man did not understand what Ryu was saying. The master then showed the chief a map. Ryu explained that he had traveled from the empire in the east to the harsh north ice cap and also went to the western forest. Ryu told him that he had traveled for many years and discovered countless legends and traditions. Ryu also explained that he had come to know the story of the god or deity that was revealed in the red wasteland in their village. The chief was confused by what Ryu was saying. The master said that he was searching for a god named Azi Dahaka. It is known that Azi Dahaka is a figure given power by the gods, and Azi Dahaka is also referred to as one of the six incarnations. Ryu said that Azi Dahaka is called the greatest and strongest. The master also explained that Azai Dahaka was a highly respected being. Humans usually show their respect by worshipping him. Azi Dahaka is also known as the demonic incarnation of the black dragon. In the evening, Ryu made herbal medicine for Ashita. Ryu explained that the medicine was called a very good herb and came from the celestial empire. Ryu also explained that the medicine could boost the immune system in Ashita's body and also help vitalize and strengthen Ashita's body. Ashita smiled as she thanked the master. Ryu then said goodbye to all of them and asked Ashita to rest a lot and not exert herself. Anata asked where the master was going today. The master said that he was going downstream to conduct further investigations. Ananta then asked Ryu if the master wanted to go fishing today. Ryu nodded in agreement. He then said goodbye to Ashita and said he would go accompany the master. Ashita called out to her brother with a sad look and asked him to be careful. Ananta smiled cheerfully and remembered his sister's message. As Ryu and Ananta were about to go downstream, all the villagers stared at them. Ananta wondered why they were all acting so strangely. Downstream, Ryu and Ananta managed to catch some fish. Both of them enjoyed the fish by grilling it. While enjoying the fish, Ananta asked Ryu if his investigation of Suda had made any progress after a week in their village. Ryu said that he had not found many bright spots. The master said that so far, he could only gather information about the descendants of the black dragon. Ryu tells Ananta that in the past, Ananta's ancestors suffered from foreign invasion. But eventually they were all able to defeat the incoming invaders with the help of the black dragon. Ananta's ancestors are said to be descendants of warriors who worshipped the black dragon. They also called the black dragon the protector of the tribe. Ryu said that he only knew that much about the black dragon. But what made Ryu wonder was why everyone in the village seemed to ignore the stories about the black dragon like there was something they were hiding. Ryu looked at Ananta as he noticed the wounds on the boy's body. 
Ryu asked if Ananta was secretly still hunting without his sister's knowledge. Ananta, who heard that, was very surprised. Ryu said that he tried to pretend not to care. The master also mentioned that Ananta would soon be caught by his sister. Ananta asked Ryu to keep it a secret from Ashita, because he didn't want to worry his sister. Ananta said that winter would soon arrive, so he wanted to hunt as much as possible. Ananta said that he and his sister did not have parents. Both their parents died when he was a child. Therefore, Ashita is very protective of him and pays excessive attention to him. Ananta said that his sister still considers him as a child. Ananta mentioned that his sister had worked hard all this time by taking care of him as an adult. Ananta told Ryu that he would love to give a big gift to his sister in the form of abundant offerings. Ryu paused for a moment and then asked Ananta, wasn't that task very hard for Ananta? With a cheerful face, Ananta replied that it was not a problem for him at all. He said that he was fighting for his family members. Ananta asked the master to stop talking about heavy topics. The boy then asked Ryu why he wanted to investigate the first incarnation so badly. Ryu replied that he was eager to find divine revelations. Ryu explained to Ananta that divine revelations are the source that contains the sixth divine power of the incarnation. This power is said to exceed the laws of the world as well as human understanding. The six incarnations also contain the powers and abilities of the gods. Ryu explained that if someone could get the six incarnations, then that person would certainly be able to see something that existed outside the world. Suddenly, Ananta asked about the old scale which surprised Ryu. Ryu asked if Ananta knew anything. Ryu grabbed Ananta's shoulder and asked him to explain about the old scale. Ananta said that he actually knew about it from other people, and it was a secret that should not be revealed. Ananta explained that he got the story from Ashita when he was a child. His sister told him that in ancient times, the black dragon went on a rampage and defeated all the invaders who came to the village and turned their village to ashes. Afterwards, to contain its power, the black dragon entrusted a scale to Ananta's ancestor. The ancestor then extracted the source of his power, and finally Black Dragon was able to sleep peacefully. After that incident, the ancestors built a temple called Dragon Canyon to immortalize Black Dragon. Ananta's ancestors also entrusted the temple to the village's elite warriors to be able to protect the Black Dragon's scales from criminals. Ananta suddenly stopped his speech and asked Ryu mad that he could not continue his explanation. Ryu was silent and could not say anything. Ananta then continued to say that the village chief had allowed the master to stay as long as possible. Ananta stood up from his seat and said that he was ready to take the master to explore other places. Ryu then said that there was a place he really wanted to visit and asked Ananta to guide him. Not long after, Ryu, Ananta, and Ruby were in a vast desert. On top of a cliff, Ryu told Ananta that he had a dream that he wanted to realize. Ryu said that he longed to find the horizon of the world that could connect him to the land of the gods. Ryu was determined that he would never stop his steps until that dream could be realized. Ryu turned to Ananta with a smile. The master said, even though everyone in the world would hate him, he would never stop. Ananta did not understand what the master meant. Ryu asked if Ananta had heard about the Black Dragon Curse. Ryu mentioned that Ashita was sick because of the curse of the Black Dragon. Ananta was surprised to hear that. The master told Ryu that Black Dragon was using the villagers to carry on the demonic deity curse brought by divine revelations. Ryu also told Ananta that the reason his parents died was because of the Black Dragon. At that moment, Ananta's thoughts were that Ryu could easily blame their Black Dragon. Later that night, Ashita woke up from her sleep. She was surprised that Ananta had not come home yet. Ashita stepped outside and felt the cold air. The elder sister was very worried about her brother and said that Ananta must not get sick. On the other hand, Ryu went to the Dragon Abyss Temple, but his steps were stopped by the elite soldiers of the village. They said that Ryu was not allowed to set foot there. The soldier attacked Ryu with his spear, but Ryu easily reversed the attack and made the soldier fall to the ground. Meanwhile, the other soldiers shuddered in fear. Ryu asked them to get out of the temple. Behind Ryu, Ananta was hiding and watching Ryu who could defeat the village elite soldiers very easily. 
Ryu invited Ananta to come inside the temple and asked him to move quickly before dawn. Suddenly Ryu chuckled and said that everything was going according to his plan. Meanwhile, Ananta does not understand what the master's intention is. Ryu told Ananta not to worry. Ryu then opened the box in front of him and saw a scale inside. Ryu said that it was the scale of the last report that was deliberately arranged in reverse. Ananta asked if the black dragon scales they saw were an inverted scale. Ryu thanked Ananta for all his dedication over the years. Ananta then asked if the master could help him heal his sister after this. Ryu held Ananta's shoulder while saying that humans are very stupid creatures. Ananta was shocked to hear this. Suddenly, Ryu took Ananta's hand and placed it on the black dragon scales. Suddenly, blue light radiates out of the fort. On the other hand, Ashida, who was in front of her house, was surprised to see the light. She knew that the light came from the dragon gorge. The black dragon that had been sleeping for a long time finally woke up. All the villagers who saw were very surprised. One of the villagers asked, Which fool had dared to wake up the god? Inside the dragon gorge, Ananta woke up from his stupor. He was surprised to see Ryu on a mound of earth smiling. The man grabbed an object shaped like a flower. Ryu said that he could finally obtain the miracle that formed the horizon of the world. Not long after, Ryu stuck the flower stem into his chest. The man screamed hysterically accompanied by a dazzling blue light. The black dragon then came close to Ryu. It asked the master if the man knew the consequences of laying hands-on dragon scales. Azi Dahaka asked what the master's name was. Suddenly, Ryu's physique transformed into the figure of a white bird. The man introduced himself as Gyuyo, the incarnation of the wings. On the other hand, Ananta finally woke up from his stupor. He was confused by what was happening. In front of him, he saw a black dragon and a white figure with wings. Ananta was confused about what had happened while he was unconscious. Azi Dahaka said that he could feel the power of divine revelation in Ryu's body. Dahaka said that he didn't believe Ryu's body could withstand the power of divine revelation. The black dragon wondered what Ryu had done to the recipient of the revelations. Ryu replied to the black dragon that Azi Dahaka's question was very predictable. With innocence, Ryu said that he had killed all the recipients of revelations for his own interests. Ryu, who had changed his figure into the incarnations of the wings, said that the Anga had become weakened. Ryu said that this was because he had separated the divine revelations. With a haughty tone, Ryu said to the black dragon that he would bury the dragon's body with his own hands. The black dragon felt very angry. Azi Dahaka then released a huge fire. He then asked Ryu to show all his strength. Finally, Azi Dahaka and Ryu fought each other under the bright starlight. The black dragon gave his all to defeat Ryu. The incarnation of the wings did not leave any room for the black dragon either. He then unleashed a force that emitted a bright light. Ryu chanted a spell that asked the black dragon to drown in light. On the other hand, the villagers came out of their homes and saw a bright blue light in the sky. Ashita, who was in the center of the villagers, was very worried about her brother's whereabouts. Meanwhile, Ananta was bowed down limply watching the fight between the two creatures. Both of Ananta's hands were cut off due to the actions of Ryu who used him. Finally. The new incarnation of the wings managed to defeat Azi Dahaka. The black dragon fell to the ground. Meanwhile, Ryu chuckled. The white-haired man intended to ascend to heaven immediately. Ananta cried hysterically with everything that happened. He felt very guilty about Ashita, even though he only intended to save his favorite sister. Meanwhile, the black dragon finally invited Ananta to talk. The black dragon knew that Ananta had helped the incarnation wing. Ananta cried in fear. He apologized to Black Dragon and said that she did everything for his sister. The Black Dragon said that what had happened was very sad. The Black Dragon shouted angrily that he would never forgive Ananta. Azi Dahaka said that Ananta would be cursed. Not long after, Azi Dahaka was awakened by a blaze of red light. Ananta, who was in front of him, was terrified. Ananta was surprised that the demon was flying towards the village. All the villagers were shocked to be hit by the flames from the black dragon's mouth. All the villagers were burnt, including Ashita. Ananta ran while crying to see all the people he loved burned in the flames. Suddenly, Azi Dahaka entered Ananta's young body and made all of Ananta's blood boil. His body shook violently and his heart seemed about to explode. Not long after, 
Ananta's physique changed drastically into that of a grown man. Ananta's hands grew back after being possessed by the black dragon. Ananta suddenly woke up from his long dream after rampaging in front of Ryu. Now he was locked up in chains. The look in Ananta's eyes reflected a deep hatred for the incarnation of the wings. It was no longer the cheerful gaze of little Ananta, but a gaze filled with rage. Back to the present, when the incarnation of the wings managed to destroy the White Lotus, he invited Beharin and Ziz to return to Dilapidate Temple. But before Ryu left, he told the incarnation of the wings that Ananta hated him and called Ryu a disgusting animal. Ryu smiled as he said that he and Ananta did have a very long history. Nadia kneels in front of Ryu and says that she's dead set on meeting the incarnation of the wings again. Meanwhile, two people were reporting to a red-haired woman called Her Majesty the Queen. The two subordinates said that someone named Bernhardt had returned from the Southern Watch Post. The Queen said that she was very happy to hear the news. She asked her subordinates not to ruin her mood. The Queen got out of her bath and told one of her subordinates named Murr that she now had to leave immediately. Murr also reported that according to the messenger, inside the White Lotus, there was one incarnation and two humans engaged in battle. The Queen confirmed with Murr whether the incarnation in question was a creature with flipper wings. But the other subordinate said that she didn't know either. The subordinate told the Queen to see the condition in person. The Queen smiled as if she was impatient. Bernhard was not killed, but he did have a chest wound. At the White Lotus, the big man introduced himself to Nadia as someone who hated the Incarnation Wing. Bernhardt then invited Nadia to come to his organization's headquarters, saying that he was going to hold a match. Nadia knew for sure that Bernhardt's goal was to see Ananta's true power. After their battle at White Lotus, Hyangbal the Whitefoot was never seen again. Actually, since the battle at White Lotus, Nadia could decide to go anywhere, but the white-haired girl finally went to the northeast part of the continent to meet some people. The person Nadia was referring to was the first princess of a fallen country called the Land of Valkyria. The country was made up of militant people who hated the incarnation of the wings. The red-haired queen named Lagursa Einherjar was the leader of the Levitane. The queen sat on her throne smiling. It was not long before Bernhardt was invited in. Bernhardt greeted the queen. Next to Bernhardt was Nadia. The queen asked Bernhardt to explain the results of his expedition. Bernhardt explained that he and his troops had eliminated everyone who participated in the arena and eventually disguised themselves as the people he had killed. Bernhardt said that initially he found unexpected things happening. But finally, Bernhardt managed to get to the top of the sacred tree. Bernhardt told the queen that he also met the incarnation of the wings. Everyone there was very surprised to hear Bernhardt's explanation. The queen was even more curious about Bernhardt's story. The big man said that he finally fought with Ryu, but was quickly defeated by the incarnation of the wings. The queen ascertained whether her men had finally returned with an empty achievement. Bernhardt said that victory or defeat was only temporary. But with confidence, Bernhardt said that he would one day kill the incarnation of the wings with his own hands. The queen smiled and suddenly shouted that Bernhardt was indeed an extraordinary subordinate. Lagerza was then curious about Nadia, who was beside Bernhardt. Bernhardt introduced Nadia as the incarnation of nature and a member who also pursued the incarnation of the wings. Bernhardt told the queen that Nadia would lend her strength to defeat the incarnation of the wings. A Lagerza subordinate said that Bernhardt only brought a common girl and a man he called a barbarian, Ananta. But since Ananta and Nadia had provided protection to Bernhardt's troops, the subordinate said that they eventually formed a partnership with Ananta and Nadia. In addition to Nadia, there was a girl who was a victim of the fake incarnation of the Wings offering. The subordinate mentioned that the girl would be transferred to a state civilian residence. Meanwhile, Ananta was said to be being monitored with medical facilities. The subordinate said that Ananta was now in a coma and unconscious. The queen came down from her seat, smiling as she welcomed Nadia. The queen extended her hand while introducing her name. Nadia accepted the hand and thanked Queen Lagursa for accepting her with open arms. Lagursa immediately shot a question at Nadia. Why did the incarnation girl want to involve herself with Levitane? The queen said that if Nadia's goal was to become a spy who deliberately infiltrated Levitane, 
Lagursa invited Nadia to make a deal with her. But Nadia suddenly said that she wanted to know information about the branch inside her body. But suddenly a subordinate shouted that the queen did not need to care about what Nadia said. The brown-haired woman said that she could not stand the smell of incarnation wings from Nadia's body. The brown-haired woman pointed at Nadia while saying that Nadia must have received the winged incarnation branch inside her body. Lagursa confirmed with Nadia whether what her subordinate said was true. Nadia was silent for a moment, and then replied that what the brown-haired woman said was indeed true. Nadia even mentioned that after her encounter with the incarnation of the wings, the branch's pulse in her body kept racing. However, Nadia said that she herself did not have clear information about the branch inside her body. The queen then asked Bernhard if his subordinate could provide information about the wings of Incarnation Branch. Bernhard bowed respectfully to the queen and said that he did not give any information until the queen gave him permission. Lagersa said that if Nadia was indeed the incarnation she was looking for, then it would be a very unique thing. But suddenly, a subordinate came and made Lagursa very upset because the subordinate was said to have disrupted the meeting. The subordinate said that in the civil residence precisely at the fort, there was a big commotion going on. The commotion was precisely the massacre carried out by Ananta, who had woken up from his coma. During his coma, Ananta had a very long dream. In his dream, a terrible memory of when he was a child entered. He saw all the villagers of the Black Dragon descendants die in the fire. Meanwhile, he was possessed by Azi Dahaka, who had cursed him. In the midst of the enormous flames, Ananta walked over to his sister's corpse. Ananta remembered well the last message Ashita had spoken before he left with Ryu. She had asked Ananta to be careful and return home safely. Ananta hugged Ashita's corpse, which was already burnt by the fire. Ananta screamed hysterically and said that he would kill the incarnation of the wings. In the nightmare, Hayang Bal appeared staring inside Ananta's body. Ananta woke up from his dream. He was surprised to wake up in a strange place. Suddenly next to him was a small brown-haired child who mentioned the word Koko Nene. Ananta did not understand what the child was saying. Ananta wondered if the child in front of him was an incarnation, but Ananta did not want to worry about that. He immediately got up from his seat to immediately meet the incarnation of the wings. But just as he was about to take a step, Ananta coughed up blood. Ananta felt that he could not breathe at all and his vision was blurred. Ananta knew that he had used too much curse power. Ananta suddenly collapsed to the floor and made the brown-haired girl very surprised. The girl just ran out like nothing had happened and that made Ananta a little upset. Ananta then walked out and became the center of attention of many people. As he continued to walk, Ananta continued to pay attention to his surroundings. He wondered where he was now. Because in front of his eyes, he could not see the vast sky at all. Ananta guessed that he must be in the underground city. Ananta was suddenly stopped by several people who looked like guards. One of the guards asked Ananta to stop because he saw Ananta as very suspicious. The guard asked Ananta to obey the arrest order. Ananta let out a long sigh while saying that he just wanted to pass by, but suddenly Ananta's body was hit by someone. Ananta felt upset. The man who hit Ananta asked the guards if they had seen his child. The guards addressed the black-haired man as Mr. Owl. Ananta was surprised to see the mark on the back of Mr. Owl's hand. Ananta seemed to notice and recognize the symbol. Ananta knew that the sign had been told about it by Hayang Bal when they first met. Hayang Bal showed her the mark as a symbol to find the incarnation of the wings. At that time, Hayang Bal showed a badge called Myongho. The badge symbolized a family, group, or authority that was a follower of the incarnation of the wings. Ananta was about to touch Mr. Owl's shoulder, but the black-haired man realized quickly. He then pointed his gun at Ananta, who was behind him. With a sharp look, Mr. Owl said that he really hated being touched from behind. Ananta was very annoyed with Mr. Owl. He then threw his fist at the man with the yellow eyeballs. Mr. Owl knew that Ananta was very strong. He then said that today was his day of rest. Mr. Owl looked at Ananta and didn't expect Ananta to emit such a strong aura of hatred. Ananta suddenly asked about the symbol on the back of Mr. Owl's hand. Ananta ascertained whether the symbol had anything to do with the incarnation wing. 
Mr. Owl did not answer Ananta's question. Mr. Owl quickly swung his sword at Ananta. With a smiling face, Mr. Owl said, If Ananta wanted to know about something, then he had to show his strength. Feeling challenged by Mr. Owl, Ananta immediately showed his strength by showing his hands, which had very large claws. Mr. Owl wondered what power Ananta had. Meanwhile, the Levation soldiers immediately shouted and hurriedly ran to report it to Queen Lagursa. Mr. Owl began to get nervous about Ananta's strength. He muttered that his sword would not be able to withstand Ananta's attack. Mr. Owl actually knew that Ananta was in no shape to start a fight. Because of this, Mr. Owl felt that he had an opening to attack. Not long after, Mr. Owl connected his sword to Ananta's body. But suddenly Ananta went berserk out of control and terrified all the villagers. Mr. Owl knew that he was now afraid. Suddenly someone shouted for Mr. Owl to back off. The man whose real name was Yaoi looked back and saw Queen Lagursa coming. Queen Lagursa quickly swung her sword at Ananta. Ananta screamed hysterically because of the attack from Lagursa. Meanwhile, Nadia shouted that Ananta was not their enemy. Bernhardt tried to dissuade Nadia, but Lagursa said if Ananta became a threat to her people, then she would not hesitate to kill Ananta. Lagursa shouted at Ananta and said that she would end Ananta's life soon, but suddenly the black dragon that enveloped Ananta's body moved on its own as if it was about to fall. Not long after, Ananta's human body fell to the ground and shocked Lagursa. Finally, Ananta was taken to the dungeon. Meanwhile, Nadia was also being watched on alert by the royal guards. Mare told her colleague that everyone had been ordered to be careful. Her colleague responded that soon, rumors would spread throughout the fortress. Meanwhile, Lagursa finally held an executive meeting to discuss Ananta. A fourth commander named Lupa expressed his opinion. Lupa said that they all had to kill Ananta immediately because the man was very dangerous. Meanwhile, Yewi, known as Mr. Owl, said that Lupa had too wild an idea. The third commander of Levitain said that they could use Ananta's power. While a second commander named Tarkin, he said he was not interested in the existence of Ananta at all. Queen Lagursa then asked Bernhardt, the first commander, for his opinion. Lagursa asked if Bernhardt knew who Ananta was. Bernhardt said that Ananta's presence would definitely cause a lot of internal opposition. However, Bernhardt pleaded with all members of the meeting to accept Ananta joining, even though there would be a lot of instability in the future. Bernhardt told Lagursa that Ananta had extraordinary abilities. Bernhardt also mentioned that although Ananta had unstable emotions, Ananta was said to be a person who had a deep grudge against the incarnation of the wings. Bernhardt stated seriously that if Levitain could utilize Ananta's power, then Ananta could be powerful against the incarnation of the wings. Lagursa said that he accepted Ananta as part of his army. But Lupa strongly rejected the decision and asked Lagursa to reconsider her decision. Lupa then asked for confirmation from Yewi as the one who first fought Ananta. While smiling, the Lord Owl said that what Bernhardt said was not wrong. Yewi thinks that Ananta has potential. Yewi also said that if the outcome of the fight was balanced, it was certain that Yewi and Ananta would both be injured. Lupa, who heard this, wondered why there was no commander who agreed with her. Not long after, Queen Lagursa called someone in. A woman stepped into the meeting chair. That woman was none other than the herald of the rabbit's foot, Haiyang Bal. Haiyang Bal stepped in confidently while saying that she was ready to fulfill the queen's summons. Not long after, Haiyang Bal came to the fortress where Ananta was locked up. Ananta looked at Haiyang Bal with a piercing gaze. Haiyang Bal said that he became even more excited to see Ananta. Hayang Bal was called in to see Queen Lagersan. Cheerfully, she gave her greetings to all the meeting members present. Meanwhile, the Levitain commanders were surprised by the stranger's presence. They asked where Hayang Bal had come from and entered. Simultaneously, Yewi greeted the girl named Raclette. The little brown-haired child was none other than Yewi's child. Meanwhile, Bernhardt asked the queen who the pink-haired woman was. Lagersa asked all the commanders not to worry because Haiyang Bal has extraordinary powers to be able to cross space. Lagursa then introduced Haiyang Bal as a member of the information called Rabbit Foot. Lagursa also told that before Bernhardt returned to the kingdom, Haiyang Bal came to see the queen and made a deal together. Lagursa said that Haiyang Bal met him to work together to defeat the incarnation of the wings. 
At first, Lagursa thought that Hyang Bal was a bit unaware. But Lagursa thought again, there was no way the pink-haired woman had come for no purpose. Lagursa told Hyang Bal to tell her the plan the girl had. Hyang Bal was pleased that the queen did not think too long. Hyang Bal informed her that they wanted to establish a permanent cooperation between Whitefoot and Levitain. Hyang Bal also said that the members of Whitefoot would provide reinforcements to defeat the incarnation of Wing. Eagerly, Hyang Bal would also give Levitain the power called Incarnation of Revenge. Lupa said that she strongly disagreed with Hyang Bal's invitation to cooperate. Lupa asked who Hyang Bal was referring to. Suddenly, Ananta walked in and referred to himself as the Incarnation of Revenge. Ruby, who saw his master return, immediately jumped up and ran towards Ananta. Meanwhile, Raclette was shocked by the Red Lizard's behavior. Ananta said confidently that he would kill the Incarnation of the Wings. Lupa's anger was further inflamed by Ananta's arrival. The female commander said that Ananta should remain in prison. Lupa wondered what the guards had done to let Ananta out. Lupa asked Lagersa to give her an order to kill Ananta, but the queen asked Lupa to calm down because Lagersa wanted to hear Ananta's story. Lupa felt upset, but she had to respect the queen's order. Lagersa looked at Ananta's wounded body. Lagersa called Ananta an interesting figure because there were so many scars indicating that Ananta had been involved in many battles. Lagersa also thought that Ananta's ferocious gaze could not be compared to anything she had ever been through. Lagersa said that Ananta was a human incarnation. Hyang Bal then introduced Ananta as the greatest power in Whitefoot. Ananta grabbed Hyang Bal's head while saying that he never said he was part of Whitefoot. Hyang Bal was shocked while chuckling, but suddenly the figure of Blackfoot, Hyang Bal's partner, appeared. Blackfoot whispered to Ananta that the man had just been defeated by the incarnation of the wings. Ananta could not deny this. He finally could only remain silent while holding back his annoyance. Hyangbal also said that Ananta's emotions were currently very unstable. Lagersa then asked Ananta if he could kill the incarnation of the wings. Whitefoot was about to answer the question, but Lagersa immediately cut him off, saying that the queen had asked Ananta to answer her question. Lagersa said that she didn't care about Ananta's origins, because according to Ratu Lagersa, Ananta is very strong. Lagersa also mentioned that everyone who was present at the meeting had the same goal to eradicate the incarnation of the wings. Lagersa said that Levitain had a big goal which was to take revenge on the incarnation of the wings. Lagersa informed that one of the people who held a grudge was Yehui, who had previously fought with Ananta. Yehui is an incarnation of swordsmanship. Yehui used to be a follower member of the incarnation of the wings. However, the group was destroyed due to the enmity within it. Yehui vowed to avenge himself by burning the incarnation of the wing symbol on the back of his hand. Therefore, Lagursa accepted Yehui into her group. It was the same with Ananta. Lagursa could see that Ananta had a very burning grudge with the incarnation of the wings. Ananta finally opened his voice. The man confirmed again to Lagursa whether the queen asked about Ananta's desire to kill the incarnation of the wings. Ananta told her that he had been cursed by Azi Dahaka for preying on the power of the evil spirit. Therefore, every time Ananta eats animals and takes their power, Ananta will continue to grow stronger. Ananta said that he would soon hunt the evil spirit to regain his strength so that he could defeat the incarnation of the wings. Ananta firmly said that he would kill the incarnation of the wings on behalf of Queen Lagursa. Ananta asked the queen to cooperate with him. But in the middle of his speech, Ananta also slipped harsh words that made Lupa very angry. Lupa got up from her seat and asked angrily what Ananta had just said. However, Lagersa laughed out loud and called Ananta unique and had no ethics at all. Lagersa walked up to Ananta while saying that he was willing to cooperate with the incarnation of vengeance. Lagersa then ordered her subordinates, Mare and Scald, to bring Nadia before her. On the other hand, in the place of the incarnation of the wings, Ziz, the new incarnation of Ryu's creation, was enjoying a very large meal in the form of a giant white tiger. Ryu said that all those present would be celebrating Ziz's birth. Biharan then bowed as he said that all present would follow the orders and directions of the incarnation of the wings. Ryu then ordered Biharan to open a door. Not long after, a place filled with ferocious creatures was seen.
After Beharin was ordered to open a door, there were many mysterious creatures that were very scary. Ryu stood on a large rock as he watched the creatures. Suddenly the incarnation of the wings told the creatures that they had lost their status as spirit beings because of the evil spirit. Ryu also mentioned that they would not be able to return to their original form. Ryu asked the beings to remember that as an insult. Ryu continued to provoke the beings by saying that they had given up on the reality of life and irrationality. Ryu also confidently said that he was the one who inherited the horizon of the world and could connect with the gods. Ryu called out that if the beings were willing to follow him and blaspheme the gods, then he would transform the beings' sinful bodies into holy ones. The incarnation of the wings asked the group of creatures to prove their ability through the grace of wing. It wasn't long before the creepy creatures were fighting each other and making Ryu laugh fast. Meanwhile, in the Levitane's kingdom, Mir and Scald had brought Nadia to Queen Lagursa. Lagursa welcomed Nadia. Nadia was surprised to see that in that place, she also saw Ananta and Whitefeet. But Nadia was confused by the unrecognizable figure of Blackfeet. Lagursa told Nadia that she had just had an important conversation with Ananta. Lagursa said that Nadia and Ananta had officially become members of the Levitanes. Ananta protested that she had never claimed to join the Levitanes. But Bernhardt said that this was only a temporary alliance. Bernhardt said that the Levitanes needed Ananta's strength in order to defeat the incarnation of the wings. Bernhardt also said that Ananta would also need additional manpower. Bernhardt also told Nadia that the girl would benefit from joining the Levitanes. Bernhardt said that Nadia would get the information she needed. Bernhardt looked at Nadia seriously, saying that the white-haired girl should be prepared to hear a painful story. Nadia looked down and begged Levitane to tell her about the branch living inside her body. Lagursa suddenly said the word Misteltine. It was a branch of the world tree. Lagursa confirmed that Nadia must have seen the transformation of Ryu into an incarnation that went hand in hand with the battle robe. Nadia remembered a little girl with red eyes who was addressed as Ziz. Lagursa continued to explain that the branch identity was also called the Grace of Wing. Grace of Wing is an evolutionary catalyst that can make monstrous creatures turn into incarnations. Bernhardt continued the Queen's explanation that Nadia was also a creature reborn as an incarnation created by Ryu. Bernhardt said that creatures that had become incarnations were also called incarnation of wing creatures. Bernhardt said that Nadia's current appearance was a result of the power of the branch. Bernhardt also said that Nadia's original appearance might be an abomination. Nadia couldn't believe Bernhardt's explanation, and even called Bernhardt out for talking nonsense. Nadia asked why the incarnation of the wings, who had the power equivalent to a god, would utilize monster creatures that were not incarnations. Lagersa let out a long sigh while saying that the power of the branch could turn the incarnation into an evil spirit. Lagersa then said that she had seen the scary incident herself, the moment when his homeland Valkyria was destroyed by the incarnation of the wings. At that moment, heavy rain fell. Lagersa saw the figure of the incarnation of the wings who controlled the power of evil spirit. The monster came to destroy her entire village. The monster itself was the embodiment of the Valkyria guardian, who eventually turned into evil spirit. Ananta interrupted the queen's conversation, wondering if the Levitane suspected that Nadia was a follower of Ryu or evil spirit. Because according to Ananta, Nadia just looked like a useless fool. Bernhardt mentioned that Nadia was special because the girl had the closest connection to the horizon of the world sought by Ryu. Ananta didn't understand what the horizon meant. Lagersa explained that the royal family had long passed down the myth of the branch from generation to generation. The dimensional horizon is a dimensional gap formed by the birth of the world tree. The purpose of the incarnation of the wings was to make an attack on the divine world through the dimensional rift. Therefore, Ryu is currently still creating tons of creatures that will become the seedlings of the world tree. Lagursa also explained that the power of the branch was so strong that ordinary beings would not be able to withstand such power. As for creatures that could withstand the power of the branch, there were very few of them. Lagursa explained that the topic was just about to begin. Lagursa said that their goal was to find out about Ryu's branches. Ryu is known to have a very large number of branches. 
With the help of Nadia and Ananta, Levitain wanted the two of them to defeat the royal family guards who had been transformed into evil spirits.